now. Bear County deputies seizing a tiger and a bobcat from a San Antonio home today. The arrest made at the scene and how this case could be related to a tiger seized last month. And with new fears about the COVID-19 variants widely spreading, new hope for millions more now eligible to get the shot. Plus, we'll have the latest on the vaccine trials for children. And we're watching the radar closely as we are expecting some storms to develop, some of which could be strong to severe. I'm going to time it out for you and help you prepare coming right up. Plus, the owner of that restaurant that was hit by hate graffiti now responding to the outpouring of support. And the governor's office has something to say about the incident now, too. The News at 5 starts right now. First at five, a popular documentary on Netflix could be the reason why people are trafficking exotic animals, even here in Bear County. That's according to Sheriff Javier Salazar. Is it the Tiger King effect? Today, one person taken into custody for outstanding warrants after the sheriff's office found a tiger cub and baby bobcat at their home on Shane Road. That's on the southeast side. The sheriff says it's not clear who the cubs belong to, but he believes the Netflix documentary Tiger King could be what inspired them. It's just like when, when 101 Dalmatians came out, everybody wanted a Dalmatian. Okay, so now people are seeing this on Netflix. Oh, wow, how cute. Look at that little tiny tiger cub. Well, it's going to be a 500-pound tiger uh, overnight. And so, you know, people just need to use their, use their brain and realize that not only is it dangerous, not only is it extremely irresponsible, it's illegal. And we're going to come out and seize the animal. Salazar says the animals are being held at the San Antonio Zoo until they can be transported to a sanctuary. Last month, the sheriff's office seized a tiger from a southwest side property, and in February, a tiger cub was seen in the backyard of a southwest side home. Blood on a sheet and a baby missing for weeks. San Antonio police still looking for little James Chiles, an 18-month-old who was last seen by relatives around Thanksgiving. This morning, his 20-year-old mother, Delaney Chiles, was arrested on a charge of abandoning or endangering a child. Arrest records state she wouldn't answer investigators' questions, but she did say she didn't feel ready to be a mother and considered giving the baby up for adoption. The affidavit also says while searching Chavez's trailer, investigators found a crib bed sheet with human blood on it. We aren't going to rule out any one bit of foul play and danger all of those things are still in motion. The mother and son reported missing in late February. SAPD released video from two sightings this year, one showing the two at a drugstore back in January. Another, this one, showing Delaney riding a VIA bus by herself two days after they were reported missing. SAPD is asking anyone with information on James' whereabouts or on this case to call them at 210-207-7660. New at 5, the Kendall County Sheriff's Office now reporting a fatal crash on Highway 27 this morning. That's in comfort. In a Facebook post, the Sheriff's Office says the highway had to be shut down at Roosevelt while first responders cleared the scene. They didn't say exactly what happened or how many people died, but they did update that post saying the intersection has since reopened. DPS is handling this investigation. Road rage may be to blame for a shooting. San Antonio police found a man who had been shot in the 8100 block of Landing Avenue around 10 last night. That's on the west side. They aren't sure where he was shot, but they do know he escaped a wrecked car near Highway 90, not far from where he was found. Investigators believe the shooting may have happened during a road rage incident. The man taken to the university hospital for treatment. An update now on a business that was vandalized with graffiti over the weekend. The owner turning to Instagram to thank people for showing their support and to share a message with the person responsible. On Instagram, he says, in part, quote, on Sunday, our window was filled with hate and ignorance. But by Monday, our windows were full of love and support. That's such a powerful message we are sending. Your ignorance will not overcome the love and support we have for one another and this city, and you will not divide us, end quote. The Noodle Tree restaurant located on the northwest side it was vandalized on Sunday with what you see here. Wynn, who's the owner, says he believes it's all because of an interview he gave about being against lifting the state's mask mandate. Today, the governor's office released a statement saying in part, quote, attacking a business and spewing hateful rhetoric for exercising their right to determine how they operate is abhorrent. 
Just like no shirt, no shoes, no service, businesses have every right to require that their patrons wear masks while on their property. It goes on to say that Texans and Americans alike have learned and mastered over the past year the safe practices to protect themselves and their loved ones from COVID and do not need the government to tell them how to do so, end quote. Is there a better way to deal with vaccinations when it comes to COVID-19? Should there be a waiting list? Those questions being discussed right now at the City Council's Community Health and Equity Committee meeting. Our Garrett Berger has been following along with that meeting. Garrett joins us now in the newsroom. So tell us what's the latest on all this, Garrett. Well, Steve, representatives from the county's four vaccine hubs were all in on the meeting. Metro Health, University Health, UT Health and WellMed giving updates on their vaccination processes. And while it wasn't on the agenda, this meeting became an opportunity to talk about a possible registry or wait list for vaccinations. Now, while other Texas metro areas like Houston and Dallas have wait lists in some form, vaccination appointments here in San Antonio have largely been opened up as more doses become available, meaning many people have to try multiple times before getting a spot. Councilman John Courage has been the driving force behind establishing a registry or wait list where people could sign up once and then be called by a vaccine provider when it's their turn for an appointment. He appeared on today's call, again standing by his belief that it's a good move. He did also mention that he approved of the system University Health had said it uses, which has included reaching out to school districts to get lists of people that need the vaccine. Now, council members are still discussing everything right now. We'll be following those discussions and bring you the latest later this evening. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Garrett. As spring breakers flock to beaches and some states ease up on their COVID-19 restrictions, there is renewed fear about rapidly spreading variants. Yet hope is on the horizon. More Americans are now eligible to get a COVID-19 vaccine. As Nadia Romero explains, that could soon include small children. Spring break fever taking over Florida beaches and with more states easing restrictions and COVID-19 variants spreading a wave of new concerns. We are just starting to turn the corner. The data are moving in the right direction, but where this goes is dependent on whether we all do what must be done to protect ourselves and others. One key to protection is a COVID-19 vaccine, and now millions more Americans are eligible, including teachers in all 50 states. We want to make sure our students continue to have a stable and consistent educational program. Teachers getting shots in arms and possibly their students at some point in the future. Moderna announcing Tuesday children between six months and 11 years old have been vaccinated in the company's pediatric trial. I think if we're going to get to 80 percent population immunity at some level, children are going to be, need to be vaccinated. A Gallup poll from February shows more than 70 percent of Americans say they're willing to get a COVID-19 vaccine. But health experts continue to fight misinformation and distrust. And experts say several European countries' suspension of AstraZeneca's COVID vaccine rollout due to concerns about blood clots could threaten already fragile vaccine confidence. I hope that they will reverse the decision, but uh, when they do, even when they do, the damage is done. AstraZeneca and the World Health Organization say there's no evidence the vaccine is linked to adverse effects. In Washington, I'm Nadia Romero. And here at home, we are following a local teenager who's also in a vaccine trial. We're going to see how she's doing. We first told you about 14-year-old Hannah Ross participating in a Moderna COVID-19 vaccine trial. We talked to her in January. Hannah's mother, Judy Ross, says she first heard about the clinical trial being conducted by Tecton Research on social media. Hannah says she's had follow up tests to make sure she is doing well. I just went in and they did a physical exam and then I got COVID tested and they do some blood to test for antibodies. They call every other week and then we check in on the app every other week to let them know how she's doing. And coming up at six, Hannah shares how this clinical trial changed her life. Plus, we're learning more about Moderna's newest trial. At first, you were scared, and now we're not afraid anymore. One year since treating their very first COVID patient, staff at University Hospital pausing for a moment of silence today to remember the lives lost during the pandemic and all of those who have recovered. And in my 16 years, I hadn't seen the death toll as I saw in this past year alone. And it really um, disheartens you to, to see that many lives lost. We've had to become the family, the holding hands. 
To date, these frontline workers have cared for more than 2,000 COVID-19 patients. From all of us here at KSAT, we want to say thank you. Absolutely. The last year has been full of challenges for all of us, but especially for parents too. The threat of COVID-19, shutdowns, upheavals in education, family routines, childcare, the loss of social circles. Things seem more hopeful now than in past months, but we are still parenting in a pandemic. Today, a panel of professionals as well as parents tackled some of these tough topics like how all of these changes have affected mental health in both children and parents. One of the panelists, Tally Dodge from Jewish Family Services, says they've seen a 300 percent increase in people reaching out for help. If you're not taking care of yourself, there is no way that you're being the parent you want to be for your child. So 10 15, 20 minutes, a half an hour of doing things that is good for you will benefit your child. The panelists also discussed addiction to technology and the struggle of special needs children during this time. You can watch the full live stream discussion on KSET.com and on KSET TV's streaming app available on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire Stick, or any way you stream. After pushing through one of the largest spending packages in American history, President Joe Biden is now trying to convince Americans the benefits are worth that hefty price tag. In addition to new stimulus payments, the relief package sets aside billions for families and small businesses. That includes an increased child tax credit, funding for schools, transit agencies, housing and food assistance. But Republicans have called the $1.9 trillion law a liberal spending spree questioning the need for $350 billion in state and local government funding after a recent think tank study found that 23 states have actually seen their revenues grow during the pandemic. 1% for uh, vaccines and 9% for health care and a whole lot of other things. We have an inspector general to make sure the money goes exactly where it's supposed to go. Today, Biden appointed budget veteran Gene Sperling to oversee how that money is spent. Here's a look outside with our live KM. You can see 410, the airport, sunshine, also mixed in with some clouds out there. We did make it into the 80s today. In San Antonio, we briefly topped out at 84 degrees. That's good 10 degrees above average for this time of year. And we started the day well above average by a good 14 degrees with a low of 65. Now, as we go forward, we will see temperatures fall off a bit in the coming days because we do have a cold front that's going to hit us early tomorrow morning. 86 right now, Del Rio, 72 in Lakey, 77 in Shirts, 80 Panna Maria. You look elsewhere, 77 in Seguin, and no, it's not 780 in Bulverde. <laughs> it is. Thank God it's not. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it is 78 in Bulverde. All right, so as we go through this evening, southeasterly breeze, very quiet, uh, mugginess out there for sure, and then the storm chances come into the picture by early tomorrow morning. We're going to talk about that coming right up. Thank you, Adam. All right, forget the freshman 15. How about the quarantine 15? Does it sound familiar? A year stuck at home might have helped you develop poor eating habits and put on the pounds. Why you want to make some changes now more than ever. Next. Over the past pandemic filled year, many families have altered the way they eat and even what they eat. There's more cooking at home and likely more snacking since the fridge and pantry are so handy. Join your side's Marilyn Moritz with ways to get your habits and health back on track. In the past year, 80% of people Consumer Reports surveyed say they've made at least one change in the food they eat, and not all good. Eating well is especially vital right now because obesity, heart disease, and diabetes all increase the risk of COVID-19 complications. 32% of people say they've gained weight since the start of the pandemic. When people have less structure in their day and more access to the kitchen, this can lead to more snacking and nibbling and weight gain. So make it easy on yourself to grab healthy options by planning out your meals and your snacks in advance. 
Many people have avoided going inside the grocery stores. 49% said they used a grocery delivery or curbside service. That's up from 27% before the pandemic. For many people, this sparked the question, where does my food come from? So many consumers started to search out local farm stands and community supported agricultures, and many even started their own gardens. And research suggests gardening can boost mental health and mood. While some have had too much, one in five shoppers has turned to a food bank in the last year. Donations of cans and especially cash are welcome and needed. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Zebra mussels have been infesting lakes across the state. Now they have reached the San Antonio River Basin. Texas Parks and Wildlife found a handful of the invasive species in Medina Lake. The lake will be tested for larvae later in the summer. Texas Parks and Wildlife says that it's likely the mussels were brought in by barges, boats, or other equipment that wasn't properly cleaned. We have more information on KSAT.com. I had no idea about these zebra mussels, and I'm, I learned so much today. Yeah, I don't think you... They're not good. They're not, They're not good. A good thing. No, they yeah. can shut down everything. They in, clog things up. Too. Yeah. You know, piping systems and whatnot, they'll clog them up. There's one benefit that I've personally witnessed from them is that they really, uh, they're filter feeders, so they clear the up the lake. Yeah. The clarity is just pristine when you have them they around. They also, but. at this point, should be prompting boaters to be more Extra clean careful. with their boats. Yes, yeah, you keeping your boat up. Rinse those those live wells and make sure you clean off the boats before you take them to another lake. All right, so storm chances early tomorrow morning. That's one of our main headlines. A windy Wednesday and then comfortable for the latter half of the work week. Let's get right to it. Talk about our overall weather pattern. What's going to be causing this thunderstorm activity and where do we fall into the picture of chances and severe potential. Well, what we're watching here is this big upper level swirl bringing more mountain snowfall to the southern Rockies. It's moving through New Mexico at this hour and continues to trek eastward. It's going to continue to do so. And as it does, it's going to develop a cold front. And that cold front is going to be swinging through town very early tomorrow morning. So there's the upper level swirl as it moves eastward. Cold front develops, drops into San Antonio and along that cold front, We'll be right on the tail edge of the thunderstorm activity. So you look at our future cast and I like the timing and really the way the placement of the storms with this. The majority of the action north of us as usual uh, farther to the north. But what we're going to be watching is around midnight 1 a.m. Some storms developing around San Angelo. Nothing around here. Then we get to about 3 4 a.m. Edwards Plateau Hill Country. Some scattered storms likely at that point closer to about 6 7 a.m. is when we'd expect them in and around San Antonio and right along the I-35 corridor. Now notice here, I like this model because it doesn't show everybody getting hit. Not everybody's going to get in on this action, and I think the majority of South Texas is not going to get any rainfall. But for that 40% or so that does, you could see a quick quarter of an inch of rain. So you can cross your fingers for the rainfall. And then notice by 7, 8 a.m., it's all in our eastern counties and out of here and by and large tomorrow's just going to be a sunny day. There is a potential for some localized severe weather, which would mean uh, hail up to about the size of a quarter and maybe some straight line damaging winds. That's mainly basically northern Bear County and points northward. This yellow area with the primary most enhanced risk up in Oklahoma. Nonetheless, we're right on the tail end of that risk factor in terms of severe weather. So we can't rule it out, but it's not necessarily a probability. It's just a possibility for the severe weather. 78 right now, dew point is 67. You feel the mugginess, the wind out of the southeast gusting up to 22. That southeasterly breeze has that humidity in place with dew points in the 60s. The humidity gets wiped away tomorrow behind that cold front. Notice by 8, 9 a.m., very dry air in place, and not just dry air, but a gusty wind out of the northwest. We're talking gusts up to about 35 miles per hour. So not good conditions in terms of fire weather. If there is a fire, it is likely to spread rapidly because of the dry air and the high winds. So other than that scattered thunderstorm threat early in the morning, uh, round and before sunrise, it's going to be a sunny day, upper 50s to start, low 80s by the afternoon and gusty. But beyond then, Thursday through the weekend, we're talking sunny mornings in the 40s, afternoon 70s, low humidity.
I'm going to have to get some gardening done. Thank you, Adam. Thanks, Adam. All right, the Spurs bounced back big time in Detroit. <laughs> sure did. And that was a team they should have beaten given yeah. their record in the East. But that said, there were some special moments. First of all, the Spurs get their redemption in Detroit before they head to Chicago. And how about Lonnie's magic moment coming up? Lonnie Walker. Hello. After getting blown out in Philadelphia on Sunday, the Spurs got redemption against the Pistons in Detroit last night to go one-on-one -on, -one on their five-game road trip. Rookie Devin Vassell with a three-pointer to kind of get things going. And we're tied at 24-all after the first quarter. That's when Lonnie Walker, the four, takes off over the, after the starting his second game of back-to-backs. First, he hits the three to put the Spurs up by 11. Then he throws down the two-handed jam with the assist from Jakob Pertl and the Spurs lead at the half, 60-50. to Spurs break it open in the third quarter. Walker kicks it out to Rudy Gay for the three. He knocks that down. The lead is now 15. And check this out. Gay gets all ball on this on this drive attempt hands it off to Jakob Pertl who finds Devin Vassell down court for the slam Spurs still in control up 80 to 66 Patty Mills keeps things going first with the pump fake then drilling the three and last but not least DeJounte Murray hits a 32 footer at the buzzer and San Antonio leads 95 75 after three DeJounte leads his first at 19 and 10 rebounds one of six Spurs in double figures in the 109 99 victory I'm loving it. Uh, it felt it felt good, you know. Even though we're in a back-to-back, -back, I know dudes was tired. Um, the fact that we bounced back after a last night game and, and played to the best of our cap capabilities just shows uh, what type of team we are and how resilient we can be. When we get stops, we get to get out and transition and get to run. I mean, we got a young core and we're able to get out and run. Um, so that's what I was doing. I was able to get some, you know, two good dunks and right back on defense, trying to get some more. Right, but everyone was talking about Lonnie's magic moment when he drove in the lane to deliver this no-look wraparound assist to Drew Eubanks. So when did he know he's going to do that? Pretty much when I knew Drew was open. Um, Jeremy, I know Jeremy Grant was uh, behind me. Uh, he really wasn't. He was still by the elbow, I'm pretty sure, which makes the big. He had to come and help, which allows Drew to be wide open somewhere. So I had to just trust my instincts, you know, do what I do best and um, make my teammates look great. And here's the matchup for tomorrow against Chicago, 7 p.m. in the United Center. The Denver Broncos have decided to guarantee $7 million of Von Miller's $17.5 million in the final year of his contract. The move is by the Broncos now. Guarantees the final year of his six-year $114.5 million deal. The former Aggie signed in 2016. Today was the deadline for the Broncos to do that. Otherwise, Miller would have become an unrestricted free agent. His 106 career sacks leads the NFL among active players. He's been working out in California after an ankle injury forcing him to miss all of last season. Now, who did the Cowboys lose to free agency today? We'll tell you about that coming up at 6. All right. Thank you, Greg. We'll be right back. Storm chances very early tomorrow morning, but don't get your hopes up for much rainfall. Otherwise, Wednesday, sunny, windy, low humidity, dry air, near 80 for the high temperature. We'll have some gusts up to 35 miles per hour. I mentioned the fire weather threat. If a fire does develop, it would spread rapidly tomorrow. Not a good day for burning. Otherwise, you look ahead rest of the week. Beautiful, comfortable. Thank you, Adam, and thanks for watching. See you back here at 6. World News is next.